good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on when you are able to watch this new program of the participatory group, the Community of Good Practices in Public Participation, which is an agreement between the City Council of Madrid and the National Distance Education University. Together with us is a very special guest, and I always say this, but all of our guests are truly special, apart from being an amazing professional and a good friend of mine. Her name is Sonia Hernández Partal. How are you, Sonia? Recently, she has been elected Vice General Director of the recently renewed or recently elected Ministry of Housing and Urban Agenda. No longer Ministry of Transport, only Ministry of Housing and Urban Agenda. This provides more weight to something that Sonia has been working on very intensely, very personally and very closely. And I say this because recently the Spanish Urban Forum took place focused on urban agendas and it's amazing to see how renowned Mrs. De La Cruz and Sonia Hernández are because of the following and amazing outcomes of the municipalities that you've been working on. So, as I was saying, we always bring our guests back to the radio program because their topics are so interesting that we want to give different perspectives depending on the dissemination scope. Could you please tell us what urban agendas are? What is the process that is now familiar internationally and in Spain. What is an urban agenda? Sonia could spend hours talking about this, but she's going to make an effort to summarize and this will be beneficial for all. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so, so much, Marta, for your invite and for and to the university. It's a pleasure. And thank you for the commitment of this university to what we are doing from the urban national policy and the Spanish urban agenda. The opportunity to spread the word about what we are doing and convey our work is key for us to achieve our main goal, which is implementation of an urban agenda. Now, the Spanish urban agenda is an urban national policy. It's a strategic framework. It's not binding. It's not mandatory, but it's just just a tool at the disposal of city councils and town halls and other stakeholders like universities that are involved in this matter, the competences of which affect cities and towns. That's all in summary. And it answers or response to international agreements. It's not something that was born in our or invented by our ministry. There's a why behind it. We want to translate the international agreements, recognizing the role that towns and cities and human settlements in general can play to meet international objectives. The Spanish urban agenda is replicating or translating this very detached and ambiguous concept to the context of Spain, our country. What we want with the Spanish urban agenda is to make it easier to to implement international goals in town halls. Now, that's where local urban agendas come to life. It's the way that towns interpret the Spanish urban agenda so that it can be adapted to the context of municipalities, towns, cities, etc. Thank you very much. This next question has to do with a big concern for the participatory group. The whole process that you've been telling us about has two key elements that we could even qualify as uh, maybe not revolutionary, that might be too much, but in the institutional and legislation context with local schemes, act with local and regional competences that are well known by all. But what I find most fascinating about the urban agenda process in Spain is the following two elements that you can explain to us really well. First of all, the new way of working, which is a real implementation or application of multi-level governance. That's what many academics call it. And secondly, participation. Tell us a bit about these two elements. How are you living this in reality? I mean, it's not only academics who are talking about multi-level governance. No. How is this tangibly 
implemented through a very specific tool, which is the urban agenda. Well, you all know how our administration works because of the competences that are divided between the local, regional and national level. We have very standardized uh, institutions with 1000 different compartments and everybody's focused on their own part. There's no bond, there's no relating things. They just focus on my territory my citizens, my municipality, what urban agendas want is to propose a change of ways of working and affecting governance and making it multi-level. And among departments, horizontally, our proposal is to perceive cities and towns as a whole, as a part of the national territory, and to work in a more collaborative manner among the different units and departments of the town hall. Of course, we have to comply with our competences, our tasks, but the strategic vision of what we want for a city or a town, the roadmap is what we want to do differently thanks to urban agendas. How can we do this? Well, with a very easy methodology, thinking about what has been done so far and what do we want. This requires many conversations among the councils, departments, units. This is a fundamental key. So once we establish this horizontal governance, why do we call it multi-level? Because it's not only within the town hall, but the agendas become a tool for communication with other public administrations in Spain through the autonomous communities or regions in Spain when necessary with the ministries, with the Spanish national government, it's a way of using urban agendas for the ministries to understand the real needs of town halls through the local plans of action or the local urban agendas. We have created a formula to really get to know the real needs of our citizens. So when we need to define grants, aid, subsidies, etc., we can use these or base it on these elements. Now, participation has to do with leadership. This stems from people. Leadership is impossible if it stems from only one of the departments of the town hall. If you start an urban agenda from the urban planning department, people will think, oh, well, that's an urban uh, planning topic or a mobility topic. That's why it's so important for there to be a political will and commitment, not only by the mayor, but all the members of this corporation because it will allow for the continuity of these urban agendas. Urban agendas are a city strategic planning tool. It works horizontally and vertically. This It is cross-cutting. It is based on the work of people and it requires public participation, citizen participation, and it brings citizens closer using a more straightforward language to explain what the city or town is undergoing. If the, these requirements aren't met, you can't really talk about an urban agenda, but more about another type of document, like an academic document. As you can see, Sonia knows uh, agendas really well. It's part of her DNA. She has really touched on the key aspects of these processes. For instance, real participatory activities that are institutionalized, well-organized, and that have a very clear purpose. This is essential because agendas are allowing local entities and town halls to really look at the whole display and set out of the municipality, town, etc. We have talked about urban planning as a public policy. We've touched upon the, on this topic uh, in bars and around a coffee, not really in front of an audience. But if we have gained momentum because of all the constructive work revolving around public participation, we see that because of several reasons, not because of a an ineffective efficient performance, but because of the slow bureaucracy, etc. We have a model to create a physical city that is not cross-cutting. And I believe that, and I don't know what your perception is, but I believe that urban agendas can truly help elevate, complement this model. This is the million dollar question. Everybody's asking themselves this when we look at a strategic project that is as 
clean and direct and easy as public agendas, how can this make urban planning easier? How, how can it enhance it? Of course, it's a very complex question. We are all trying to figure it out, but I don't think these are parallel processes, but there needs to be convergence at some point and for them to be a positive feedback between the two. Thank you very much for your kind words. It's overwhelming to hear your, yeah, your kind remarks, but uh, urban agendas are working. Why are they working so well? One of their main strengths is that it's a very practical thing. It's a targeting action. It's not about big PhD thesis. No, it, this is, it's a very pragmatic document and we need to make the most of it. And we need to understand that when we look at a local action plan and local public agenda, if you analyze it, you see that it has a very cross-cutting vision of the town or city. And you realize soon that the activities carried out in the framework of this urban agenda cannot be neglected. It's the main content of the public agenda. These 10 targets will structure and set out the foundations of the urban agenda and many of the activities can be held without having to change legislation. Obviously, some activities do require a structural amendment of the territory or any other change of legislation. But how can we make these two compatible? Public agendas are very broad. This instrument needs to assist you. How can we make these approvals less rigid, more flexible? and be subject to only the reports that are needed because they are linked to rights and responsibilities or the structure of the city. We'll see later if this should be separate through an ordinance. We can explore this option, but what is clear is that it's an opportunity that we need to make the most of, that we need to value, and that it's an instrument to really enhance all the weaknesses that uh, the urban planning instrument has. It's not that it's dead. This instrument is really alive still. But what we do see is that not all urban planning matters are or have to be within this urban plan. Because if it is, it becomes an obstacle and this instrument becomes useless and it stops cities and towns from moving forward. It's not only about political decisions. It has to stem from the citizens' decisions. So that's why language is so important. There's only one participatory process in this instrument, which is when you are directly affected. The law recognizes this. There's public recognition, but public agendas are much broader. You can formulate the opinions on what you need, what you miss, what you would like, what you dream of for your city. Once you've carried out a very well thought of public participation process, the administration gets uh, closer to it or gets more involved. So let's play with different aspects of the plans of action. Let's make it interact with the urban planning instrument. That's the future of a policy in our country, if you ask me. I think it's impossible to explain this better than you have. What an amazing challenge we've got ahead of us. I think that the reduction of uh, the name of the ministry might mislead you to think that you have fewer competences, but it actually highlights uh, public participation, public agendas, urban agendas. As you were saying, these are not contradictory tools, but complementary tools, and they always benefit or make it easier to implement processes. We are seeing this in all the interviews that we carry out. There's a need to first Think about the holistic, multidisciplinary, cross-cutting nature of these kinds of policies. No, it's not about jurists with judicial matters. Architects working on architectural matters, being focused on our department, our unit, and that's all. Cities are complex and we require complex teams, multidisciplinary teams. The urban agenda is a participatory tool allowing us to articulate this vision. I think it's important 
possible to think of a more relevant topic for our participatory group and I really wish I really hope that town halls, city councils that are still lacking an urban agenda, I hope that they are motivated to start this process. They can count on the help of our ministry. Thank you very much, Sonia, for having come here and congratulations for becoming the general vice director of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Agenda. We know that you have many duties and responsibilities. Thank you again. Thank you for your help, for the help of your university and the City Council of Madrid. Thank you for spreading the word on all the work that we are carrying out.